Hi, and welcome to Detours. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about adynamia and akinetic mutism, which is a more serious form of adynamia. And then, the, on the much milder end, there's apathy. But we're, I'm talking about neurologically induced due to traumatic brain injury or acquired brain injury. Um, almost any form of acquired brain injury can cause this, and it's fairly commonly seen. Um, a lot of people will mistake either the what are called the vegetative symptoms uh, of depression will confuse the apathetic um, symptoms for from depression for this condition. And a lot of parents and spouses and things just say, oh, well, you're just being lazy. This is not the case. This is not what adynamia is. Adynamia is a lack of drive. Um, and that is important to know the difference because in cases of like laziness or lack of will or those kind of things, you're talking more about a person who just doesn't care, is not interested in doing anything. They're happy to, it's a more of an emotional state. Um, let somebody else do it. I'm just happy to do something else. I'd rather watch TV. I'd rather do something otherwise, but they still have drive and motivation. It's just directed towards comfort and self-interest. It's more of a selfish kind of thing. Whereas adynamia and akinetic mutism, which is very serious, uh, you see that with the degenerative disorders like uh, Parkinson's and you'll see it with Alzheimer's. Um, whereas adynamia is a lack of willpower at the most fundamental level. <coughs> um, with adynamia, um, you will see a person who wants to do things, but they just cannot gather themselves and do something where they have the ideals, they'll talk about it, but when it comes to doing it, they literally cannot do it. They will be thinking about it, planning about it, but they literally cannot do it. And so um, they may have to go to a doctor's appointment and um, they know they have to get their medicine or they know they have to see someone, but when it comes down to it, they're literally unable. And so what is the cause of this? You see this often early when people get home from the hospital. And so how this works is, um, and it gets better over time, how this works is it's believed to be, at least through neurological studies and through brain scanning, imaging works with SPECT and MRI, fMRI and stuff. It's believed that, again, just as we were talking about um, unawareness of deficits, that it originates in three similar areas. First of all, I had mentioned before about the anterior cingulate cortex, which is down in this area here. These areas are again involved. These are self-representational um, ideas about the self. Uh, so you'll see that down in here, damage to this area, the medial aspect of the cortex. So injury here. And what's interesting is deeper down, th this kind of injury also involves down here to uh, around the thalamus, which links the um, areas of the brain that will coordinate input from the motor areas, as well as spinal input. So uh, body movement, which makes sense that areas for planning, which are up here, and also involve the prefrontal cortex, the dorsolateral aspects, again, which is planning. So two areas associated with planning and emotional feelings of ideas, ideas about self, areas in your brain where you will do planning for activities and thoughts, and then the motor areas involved. So it kind of makes sense that those circuits would be disrupted when it comes to a lack of motivation to become engaged. But I'm talking about literal lack of motivation to become engaged, as opposed to something, as opposed to a desire to do something else, which is more of the laziness kind of thing. Um, you also have trouble down deeper into the brain in the hypothalamus, and you'll find problems um, with those ventral areas towards the top, uh, the various gray matter nuclei there. Those seem to be um, problems with that, seems to affect hormones as well, um, but be the classic adynamia is more cortical and seems to be associated with disruptions to white matter tract. So things like concussion can disrupt this, can take away the drive to engage and do stuff. And you'll see that with therefore concussive blows as well as 
moderate and severe traumatic brain injury as well as seeing it with um, hypoxia where you will get card post cardiac arrest um, near drowning um, any kind of major infections where you have brain swelling will put pressure and again apply and cause damage to the, the cortex on the top. Now, akinetic mutism, which is the lack of desire to, to even talk. The patient will have normal senses, normal hearing, normal vision. They'll have the ability to talk. They just won't have the drive to talk, and they won't talk at all. You'll see many elderly people in nursing homes who have Parkinson's or Alzheimer's will just kind of sit their back. They maybe look at you and smile or track you, but they're literally unable to talk. They're literally unable to move because they have akinetic mutism, which is a total lack of drive. And this involves extensive damage to these areas in the anterior cingulate here and damage to these areas in the thalamus. And it's completely disrupted and they have no desire. The typical treatment for this is ADD, ADHD medications, which causes stimulation in these areas and activations. And by stimulating these areas, um, you become less disabled by this condition. It's not a complete cure, but it does help. And so ask your physician um, if, you know, if, if you're able to get this kind of help, if you're able to take these kind, excuse me, <coughs> if you're able to, to take these kind of medications. They will also help with other metacognitive disorders. Um, so I would definitely recommend looking into it. A person with a dynamia is able to do things. They just find it much more difficult and with these medications is able to engage. Uh, akinetic mutism is a whole much deeper problem. And so that requires other treatments. Um, so that's um, a dynamia. And remember, those of you who are loved ones of survivors, it's not laziness and they're not doing it to make you work harder, to make your life harder. They have a neurological problem that needs treatment and encouragement and constantly um, saying that they're not willing to work or something like that is not the solution. Instead, the solution is to plan in small steps and, and encourage them to go see a physician or take them to a doctor. See if you can get um, stimulant medications to help activate those areas of the brain. And so that's, you know, a, di a, a dynamia and a kinetic mutism. Thank you. Have a good day. Please click like and subscribe. And we'll have other shorts like this about various uh, metacognitive and executive dysfunctions. Thank you. Have a good day.